If you're interested in the current grand solar minimum and the science associated with it, I have something to say. I'm sick and tired of the state of science and where we're going. And let's talk about it. This headline alone hits a nerve to no end. The Little Ice Age wasn't global, but current climate change is. Now, this depiction could not be further from the truth. And what I mean by that is that current climate change is normal, periodic, episodic, cyclic, and variant. Some places get hot, some places get cold. Some places get wet and some places get dry. And these changes are driven by multivariate forces, climate forcing mechanisms, including the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, the Pacific oscillation, the Beaufort gyre, the Milankovitch cycles, and on and on. We could name dozens of forcing mechanisms, including humans, which are the least of our worry. But the nature of the articles that are written are so disingenuous, it hits me to the core as a paleoclimatologist. My studies are in large glacial theory, and back in the 90s, that involved Milankovitch theory. Why was the GISP2 data so specific and so cyclic? And why was there a 100,000 year mechanism causing ice ages over the last million years? That's what we wanted to know. So we looked at it. And in the last three decades, I've never seen a paper better than this one, which uses actual climate anomalies And facts, including the temperature of the oceans. Now, a lot of people leave out the temperature of the oceans because what they expect is if solar activity declines, that everything should be cold the whole time. Well, that's not how the earth works. The earth is gigantic. People are missing out on the big picture. The global system is huge and its cosmogenic effects the effects of the cosmos are limited in scale and scope on the surface of our planet because our planet contains oceans. These are thermodynamic sinks. Unlike the which scientists are unwilling to reveal. The oceans control the climate in the short term, the cosmos in the long term. And this paper proves the short-term comparison. And what it proves is that there's a lag time between cause and effect. But what they prove here in a stunning fashion recently, I wish I had this when I was back in academia here, is that there is major drop-downs in the AMO and the PDL. These oscillation currents, the sea surface temperature in the oceans during the climate catastrophes in recent year. What am I talking about? Well, let's look at the large scale so I can bring you up to speed. What you're looking at is high resolution GISP2 data, which is the Greenland Ice Core Program. <clears throat> now in this GISP2 data, what I want to bring your attention to is the fact that this is where we're living over here on the right. This is the modern warming. The last time there was a warming like this was about 120,000 years ago during this warming period. And prior to that, about 230 to 40,000 years ago, another interstadial. And here's another interstadial at 330 to 320. And here from 425 to 400, another interstadial. These are the warm periods when you can walk upon the earth in bare feet in most places. It's where we live today. 
but today is not as warm as it was 130,000, 240,000 years ago, 330,000 or 20,000 years ago, and even 410,000 years ago. All these times were two, three, four, five degrees warmer than today. But for the majority of the last 500,000 years, we've been in deep glacial cycles. These are these low downturns. And many people wonder what, what the mechanism is. We don't wonder. We know it's the orbital eccentricity of the planet. It's what I dedicated my whole life to, studying Milankovitch theory. But there, in the short term, <coughs> are smaller cycles. In between the long-term glacial cycles... There are oscillations in climate driven by the sun. So the sun drives the climate and then the earth's cycles depict how the climate is reflected on the surface. So we have smaller scale cycles underneath the deeper cycles, which actually drive the surface climate. The Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation is one of the most important climate drivers on earth. In the short term, not the long term. This is a 30 to 50 year cycle, which goes from warm to cold and back again, which affects the surface temperature in different ways on many portions of the Atlantic coast and Europe. And we also have the Pacific decadal oscillation which has cycles in the realm of 5, 10 years and negative and positive, cold and hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and so forth. And these shift in the decadal scale. And we also have other cycles of ocean currents. We have the jet stream, the Gulf Stream, the Beaufort Gyre, other ocean currents. They all affect the climate. And then we have the work of Malutin Milankovitch, which I dedicated my graduate years to. Using three orbital variations, Milankovitch was able to formulate a comprehensive mathematical model that calculated latitudinal differences in insulation and the corresponding surface temperature for the last 600,000 years prior to the Dalton Minimum. He then attempted to correlate these changes with the growth and retreat of ice ages. To do this, Malutin Milankovitch assumed that radiation changes in some latitudes and seasons are more important to ice sheet growth and decay than those in others. Duh. Then, at the suggestion of German climatologist Vladimir Kalpin, he chose summer isolation at 65 degrees north as the most important latitude and season to model, reasoning that great ice sheets grew near this latitude and that cooler summers might reduce summer snowmelt, leading to a positive annual snow budget and ice sheet growth, just like what is happening on the Greenland ice sheet today. Surface mass budget is growing, while alarmists claim that calving at the glaciers is actually reducing ice, they're just making up fairy tales. Now, the Milankovitch cycle is the best cycle to explain the cycles we see in the long-term climate here. Here you see the eccentricity cycle peaking every 100,000 years, and then the Obliquity every 40,000, making another peak once and twice in the interim. Boom, boom. But these smaller perturbations are also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the processional cycle of the equinoxes, the great year. And even smaller scale are these quick up and downs, the grand solar minimas and maximas that occur again and again. The major fluctuations which result in temperature switches of up to 8 degrees within just a few thousand years. Up and down. And you can see the closer we get to present, the higher resolution these get. Less resolution, less, less, and extremely less. 
So you can see here in the last 60, 70,000 years, a very high resolution of what climate variability is. Every few thousand years, climate change goes up and down five or six degrees. This is what we call mini ice ages, grand solar minimas, or whatever you want to call them. Perturbations in humanity, which do not allow us to continue. And then when major abruptions, like this one here, the Younger Dryas, which raised sea levels 400 feet and rose temperatures up to 12 degrees C, and we're living up here while it goes up and down 4 degrees every few hundred years, you can see why it's hard to get a grip on reality. Things are destroyed always, time and time again. Now, the Mulder Minimum and the Little Ice Age, an update from recent reconstructions and climate simulations. Papers like this do not take into account some of the most important information we need to know. The missing link between cosmic rays, clouds, and climate change on Earth. This is just coming to light recently through the work of Spensmark. Increased ionization supports the growth of aerosols into cloud condensation condensation nuclei. This means more clouds, more rain, and cooling. So this is what causes the cooling events on Earth, cause mini ice ages. These are called mini ice ages. They are not ice ages. <clears throat> if you look at all these little blue lines in here, this is what we would call mini ice ages. There could literally be a thousand here in 30,000 years, a thousand mini ice ages during 30,000 years. They're not the main effect. The main ice age effect is the orbital variation of our planet, which bring us into this warm period every 100,000 years. We're in a warm period, and our warm period is ending based on all of the data that we've seen before. It's going to drop down because of the sun and because of our orbital variations and the Milankovitch theory. It's going to bring us back into 80,000 plus years of ice age, dropping further and further and cooler and cooler. And during that time, there will be AMOs and PDOs and Beaufort gyres and other perturbations, including massive volcanic outputs, which cool the earth in a cyclic fashion. Some summers will be the hottest summer ever, but the following winter will be the coldest ever. This is because during these periods, our magnetosphere breaks down and what was once a jet stream becomes a nightmare. The meridional flow kicks in and the jet streams become weak. Sometimes there can be dozens of jet streams. Sometimes it weakens so much that it can bring Arctic air all the way to the equator. Down here. But what is my point of doing this video? The point is that there is a lot of confusion in science right now. And people are getting funded to lie to you. So they give you reconstructions of actual data which are overlain with the Michael Mann hockey shtick. And again, here's another hockey shtick overlay showing that the climate is coming out because of it's your fault and we're all going to die. Well, I can assure you that for the last 5 million years that Homo sapiens have been around, no one has died, meaning our species. And we've lived through all of these drop downs for thousands of years. And more importantly, Michael Mann who is the perpetrator of the ruse of global warming, who is trying to make his retirement cushy and make as most money as possible, actually published some good science back in 2002. This paper called The Little Ice Age has got a lot of people confused. This is when Michael Mann was actually a professor with integrity at University of Penn. And this was the last piece of good information he gave to the earth. Anything that Michael Mann has written past 2002 is garbage. And the guy personally is the most harmful human on earth to science, humanity, and common sense that exists. 
but he hasn't arrived at this position unwillingly. He was forced in it, into it by political groups, politicians, the National Science Foundation, and others who have pressured institutions, universities to either prove global warming or be defunded. This began in the 90s. Can you imagine almost 40 years of no money unless you prove global warming? This is what's been going on in your universities. This is where you're about to send all of your hard-earned money and your children and waste it so that they can be indoctrinated into non-information for no hope for humanity. Now, what I mean by this is if the science is wrong and we're all being taxed out of our retirement for the wrong reasons, because global warming means increased CO2, increased plant growth, increased food, increased warmth, increased vacation spaces and time, and there's been no catastrophic sea level rise for 40 years while they've been bitching about it. Not a single millimeter has overtaken any city anywhere that anyone knows they can hear my voice. And if your city is shrinking or is being inundated with sea level, it's because it's sinking, not shrinking, not rising, sinking. It's called subsidence. Please Google it. Now, there's almost not a single paleoclimatologist on earth that understands what I'm saying because they're not getting paid. They're not paying for saying what I'm saying. And as early as April 4th, 2017, the most embarrassing paper came out. I want to share it with you. That these people say that the climate goes up and down so much that the sun has nothing to do with it. But they never mention the AMO, the PDO, the Beaufort Gyre, Milankovitch Cycles, or any other cacophony of climate cyclicity, which has been proven time immemorial by climatologists worldwide since the beginning of science. My science is dead. It's being pulled apart by schmucks, charlatans, and the mainstream media. When I look at a graph with the minimum winter minimum CET or the summer maximum, I can see exactly what's going on. An overlay of solar activity, the Atlantic multi-decadal, Pacific decadal oscillation, and other cycles coming together in a dance, a glorious dance, a musical dance of natural climate variability. One which very few people can understand because it's hard to understand. So start with the basics. Learn about Little Ice Age geochronology first. Learn about big consequences. Great famine, black death, the destruction of empires, witch hunts, the 30 years war, the rise of the potato, the French Revolution, the writing of Frankenstein, the invention of the bicycle, this is all to do with climate collapse during multi-decadal oscillations and climate cycles all coming together at the same time. The depictions back in the Little Ice Age are not farcical. They're fanciful. They're depicting the way that the public responded to the current cycles of climate. Look at how much blue is down here during this solar shutdown. And then when the sun picked back up, there's no blue. And when it dropped back down, there were multiple spikes corresponding to volcanic activity. Each of the drop downs in solar activity correspond to volcanic activity. There is a cacophony, a multiplicity of effects coming together at the same time to produce natural climate variability. But just because it's natural climate variability does not mean that your life is not at stake. The end of the empire is near. If you come to here, it drops straight down and every empire is gone. Right here, boom. And then we rebuilt and we learned how to build pyramids in Machu Picchu. And then this wiped that society off the map.
We're about to drop back down into the next ice age. And people are preparing to burn up. It's the biggest oxymoron in scientific history. The biggest ruse. The Little Ice Age has nothing to do with actual ice ages. Actual ice ages occur every 100,000 years and last for about 80,000 years. The last one ended just 12,000 years ago. And we've been warm since then. This is the longest interstadial in Earth's history during this ice age, which you're still in, by the way. You live in an ice age and you're still in it. The Holocene warming is a farce. It's the same as every one of these other upticks, which they never named, but they named this one because it's all your fault. I'm so sick of it. I'm sick. The Sporum minimum, the Maunder, the Dalton, and the glacial advance of 1880 to 1915 were all triggered by shutdowns on our sun. These are small perturbations in the bigger picture. But we currently, we're currently sitting on a, a way bigger flexure point. The modern maximum has ended 2016 and is dropping off a cliff, just like all the rest of the minimus. Wolf, Sporer, Maunder, Ort, boom. Straight down, empire ending. Here's a tighter graph of the drop down, and you can see our current drop down now to the eddy minimum. I hope you're preparing because in the long term, here it is. This is all of geologic time. We're in the coldest period on earth and it is predicted to continue to get colder. There is no threat to humanity from heating. The threat is from glaciation. If anyone tells you anything different, please send them to our channel so I can stick my foot right up their boom. Hope you got something out of the video. Paleoclimatology is difficult to explain. There are so many layers of information. But just because it's hot in one region doesn't mean it's going to be the coldest ever in another. This is what happened during every grand minima known in every textbook in every continent worldwide. The times when empires failed was when the weather was the most extreme in both directions. You get the coldest colds and the hottest hots. And you can get the coldest colds in the middle of summer and the hottest hots in the middle of winter, which is what destroys agriculture and destroys the empire. I'm happy to be alive during the destruction of this racist, egalitarian, ugh, it's so disgusting. Every single person I know is poor in debt, sick, on pharmaceuticals, and depressed. This is the society we created. The weather is going to erase those miseries. And you and I together will rebuild a new future based on facts, love, and harmony. Thanks for listening. Share this with like-minded people. Science and facts are hard to escape. There is no arguing any of the information I gave today. It's easy to discount alarmist claims that the sun does not control climate because they do not also understand the underlying climate cyclicity of other factors. The AMO, the PDO, the Beaufort Gyre, the fact that oceans take decades to recover from sea surface temperature changes is crux. Be safe. We love you.